Can you give us a sense of where we are on the frontier of building new machines that will have higher energy, be able to probe yet other domains, and perhaps maybe these supersymmetric particles are there, they're just heavier. Mm -hmm. So what's going on in that, in that space? So there is, let's say, a roadmap right now, but I think there's no, uh, there's no money yet, let's say, in part of this. And there's two projects that, um, let's say, if money was not a question, what would we do um, in particle physics? Well, we would build two things. We'd build two new f accelerators, one of which is, would be a linear collider. Uh, Japan has expressed a lot of interest in building such a collider and hosting such a collider, let's say. And this would be where you, instead of colliding electrons and protons, you would be colliding, I'm sorry, instead of colliding, colliding protons, you'd yep. be colliding electrons and positrons. It's a, it's a linear uh, machine, so you've got a, it's extremely long, and you basically collide them um, into each other. And why is it a good idea to do those particles as opposed to protons? So the advantage to electrons is that they're point-like, and therefore they're just clean. The problem is when you take two protons and you smash them together, you, you, what you're doing actually is you're smashing two quarks from inside those protons, but um, the actual how much energy those quarks have inside the proton is very difficult to model. Um, and then on top of that, you've got the rest of the proton that breaks up and it just leaves so a, a huge mess, amount of mess. If you yeah. look at pictures, I think we have some pictures of what a collision looks like, for example, in, in one of the detectors. You'll see there's just huge amounts of particles coming out. Like we see here. Like what you see here. So here yeah. in this event, you actually only have two particles that you're actually interested in. This would be kind of what you kind of see with these, these big uh, red blue clusters of energy. Those would be the two particles that you're interested in. And, and these um, are tracks of And particles. these are all, right. the green is all tracks of particles and so forth and so on. And most of this is just crap from, from the that's rest. That's the Either, technical term? That is, yeah, that that's, that's actually, okay. that is the technical term. We, we use that a lot in publications. <laughs> yes, good. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, so, you know, that's just the crap that comes. And in, in, in an electron, positron collision, everything's clean. You don't have this breakup of, yep. the, of the, and you know exactly what the electron energy is. Um, so from a precision measurement perspective, it's superior, right. absolutely superior. However, if you want to really go high energies, then you've got to go protons. Um, protons are what gives you your power in terms of the energy aspect. And so in addition to a linear collider in, in the ideal world is what we would have. So we'd have an ideal colli linear collider to really measure top and Higgs extremely precisely. Um, and then in the ideal world, we would have another Hadron Collider, uh, which was, you know, the, well, the next generation, the, the FCC, Future Circular Collider, um, or there's also... And where, where might that be? Are there, and that would be at CERN. This is uh, a picture of what it looks like. It's actually very, it's, it would be a 100 kilometer ring. And what so you the LHC just pointed out, it's clear up there, but just pointed out. Yeah, the, the LHC is a smaller ring here. And what's actually interesting about the circular collider is that God apparently put mountain ranges exactly perfectly such that you could build such a tunnel. I would have to go underneath Lake Geneva and it would, it would just pass right before the Alps, pass right before the Celev, um, coming back. Uh, so it's just perfect. Going under the lake is actually not a problem. Everyone always asks about going underneath the lake. But you know, the thing about a lake, because they're always worried that there's going to be a leak, you know, the thing about a lake is that there's never a leak in the lake, because if there was, you wouldn't have a lake. So no going, underneath, <laughs> going underneath the lake is no problem. But, but it is a problem in the sense that you do have mountains, and mountains lead to a lot of water drain. Um, so what would the energy scale of that machine be? Um, so this would be. Uh, Gosh, uh, it's 100 TV. <laughs> it's 100 TV. Yeah. I like, suddenly <laughs> threw a blank there. I saw the 100 kilometers and I thought, yeah, it's a 100 TV machine. So it's um, roughly, not quite, but maybe eight times? Eight times what we have now. The LHC yeah. here was uh, 14, and then you had the, the okay. Tevatron, which was, which was lower. And um, so this would be your real discovery machine. 